Hi, I'm Mark, and today I will be telling you a little bit about the Alexa Software Update 3.0. First of all, 3.0 is a software update you can download from the internet. You need to register on our website. And also, if you want all the nitty-gritty details, go to our website. There are the Software Update Packet 3.0 release notes where you have all the details. I'll be giving you a brief overview here. I'm going to start with what's probably the most important thing for most of you, and that is the playback ability. Alexa has the ability to record ProRes images onto SVS Pro cards. Now we can also play those images back from the camera. The playback images you will see in the viewfinder. You will also get them on the monitor output, which we have on this onboard monitor here, and you will get it on the rec out output. Now there are three ways that you can start the playback. The first is a very simple and quick way, and you can access that through the play button on the camera left side. That's a dedicated button that does one thing, and that is deal with playback. In order to get into the playback mode from the regular mode is you push the play button. Now you're in the playback mode. In order to start playback, you push the play button again, and here we play back a take we recorded just a second ago. To pause, push play again, play, push play again, pause, play. It's always the same thing. At the very end of the take, the camera will go back to the beginning of the take, and then you can start playback again. Now, how do you get out of the play mode? You push the play button for two seconds, and that gets you back into your regular normal mode. All right, so that's the camera left side. On the camera right side, you can actually do more. I'm going to go to the camera right side here. On the camera right side, I also have a dedicated play button. In order to get into play mode, again, I push the play button. That gives me the first frame of my playback image here on the onboard monitor, and it gives me a screen on the display on the camera that allows me to do a number of things. Of course, I can play back and pause with this soft button here. I can also circle a clip. I can set a number of options. For instance, I can loop the clip if I so choose. And I can jog or shuttle through the clip by using the jog wheel. I switch between jog and shuttle by pushing the jog wheel, and then by turning it, I go slowly or quickly through the clip if I want to locate a specific frame. Or I could go into a list of clips by pushing the clip list button. And now here I can choose which of the clips on the card I actually play back. In order to get out of the play mode, I push the home button. And now I'm back in regular mode. And now let's talk about the next feature, which is audio recording. You may have noticed that the Alexa right here has an XLR connector. Now that actually does something. It's an XLR 5 pin that takes two channel, that's stereo audio in, and that's line level audio, not mic level. And I have an audio cable here that goes straight in here. And then we have a handy little hook on the viewfinder mounting bracket, so you can hook your audio cable in there so it doesn't hang off the right side of the camera. The audio gets recorded in the QuickTime. The audio gets output as embedded audio on all your HDSDI outputs, and it gets also included in the ARRI RAW. So every day we could, we put the audio that you're recording. Since we're talking about ARRI RAW, we have included more metadata in the ARRI RAW, and we're working very closely with onboard recorder manufacturers so they can record the ARRI RAW. We're in the process of certifying a number of them right now. One has already been certified, that's the Codex onboard, and that is already used on a number of features to record ARRI RAW with the Alexa. Next, the camera has better image quality. We have a higher sensitivity available. I can set the camera now to 3,200 ASA. Previously, we had only 1,600 ASA. Now the top ASA is 3,200. And with the new sensitivity, there are also some other options. We have completely reworked the color processing inside the Alexa. And as a result, you now have four gamma options. The first option is called Lock C with Film Matrix Off. That is the most pure way to record the signal. It gives you the most flexibility in color timing. The second option is Lock C with Film Matrix On. Again, it's a Lock C signal, so it has a very flat curve, and you need a lookup table to look at it properly on a monitor. It gives you many options in post-production, and it'll look very similar to a film negative that was scanned on an Aries scan. For colorist that's used to scanning negative, this is a great option. The third option is Rec. 709. That's what any regular video system or video monitor would expect. And the fourth option is DCI P3. That is similar to the Rec. 709 in the grayscale, but it has a slightly wider color space. 
we also have some changes on the viewfinder. With the viewfinder now, we have a new mode that's called a smooth mode. In smooth mode, the viewfinder actually gets twice the number of images from the camera, so when you pan, you have less of the shuttering effect. Next, there's a false color exposure check. We're going to take this monitor back here. Um, I have put the activation of the false color exposure check of one of my user buttons here. When I push this button, I see the false color exposure check here on my monitor, and I can now tell that the blue is pretty dark. That's a one-stop over black clipping. And then when I change the iris, you can see the other colors we have available. There are six colors available. Um, they will show you underneath black clipping, one stop above black clipping. They show you 18% gray. They show you one stop over 18% gray, which is generally considered Caucasian skin. Then you have one stop under white clipping and white clipping. Those are the six light levels you probably want to know when you're shooting. And you have them, again, in the viewfinder and on the onboard monitor now. All right, we've got three more features. The first one is a single frame grab going back to the camera left side. There is a grab button. has always been on the camera, finally does something. When I push this button, I will see a little icon there. It looks like a camera with a flash or a little one-eyed alien, whichever you prefer. And that tells me that we've captured a single image in high definition resolution, and it is being recorded onto the SD card. I can capture a number of different compression formats, and then later on take the SD card out of the camera and put it in my laptop and take those images out. What else do we have? We have a different high definition outputs. Um, we now have an HDSDI 3G single link mode that allows me to record 60 frames a second in 422 over a single BNC cable. Also, we have an HDSDI very flag that allows me to record off speeds much easier with certain um, external recorders. I think that's it. Until the next time, thank you very much.